Hey, hey, it's Pika calling in from Singapore. I just want to check in on all of you. It is Sunday night. I'm looking at a very interesting week ahead. Uh, today was pretty chill. Um, let's see. I uh, made pancakes for breakfast uh, as a treat for my baby girl. And today is hair day. So I went ahead and washed her hair and put a lot of oil and deep conditioner and redid her braids so she's ready to go for the next week looking fresh and so clean <laughs> um, yeah so been watching movies all day as you know so whenever I do her hair we normally watch a couple of movies to pass away the time to keep her sitting in one place so that she you know she can sit still while I get her hair done it usually takes me anywhere from an hour to four hours depending on how intricate the design is or if I'm trying to do something simple or if I'm doing twists. Uh, twists are normally uh, faster than uh, micro braids but I do like the way the micro braids sit and they don't get as messy as fast so it actually it's better for her I think. Um, it helps keep her hair a little more moisturized. Uh, it doesn't dry out as fast and her scalp tends to stay pretty um, pretty well taken care of as well. Um, I want to talk to you about tough conversations today, mostly because, as you all know, my mom's been with me. I've been really, really grateful. It's been a little rough for the last couple of months, but having her here with me has kind of eased that pain. But now I'm looking at the tail end of her trip, and she's actually getting ready to leave on, um, on Tuesday. So that means I have a full day with her left. And as I sit here, I mean, even I feel sad. I have separation anxiety. I get attached really fast. Um, probably one of my faults. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I get kind of attached. I get used to routine really quickly. Um, and just like most people, I don't really enjoy change, but you kind of have no choice, right? You got to go with the flow. So <clears throat> gave the baby girl um, a quick shower after dinner and got her tucked into bed. And I was trying to explain to her because my mom keeps saying, you know, I'm going to go soon, I'm going to go soon. So she was trying to figure out how long that was. So we went through the days of the week. And we talked about, um, you know, when it is that, you know, grandma is leaving. So she kind of burst into tears. And it was a tough conversation to have with her because she's only six. And she's already been through so much. Um, and I know I, I won't know the full extent of how she feels about things until she gets older. Because, I mean, I won't know what that that repetitive rhetoric that goes on in her head is until she's about 15 or 16, probably. But for now, we had a conversation. We had a tough conversation. We talked about the fact that, you know, my mom is leaving to go back to Sri Lanka. But she'll be back for her graduation performance. She has a graduation performance in November. And um, she burst into tears, and the comments that came out of her mouth kind of stunned me. As I mentioned, yes, she's been through a lot. I left her father when she was two. Uh, it wasn't my choice. It was kind of suggested by him. And um, luckily, I was halfway around the world anyway, so I just decided to stay where I was. Um, from then onwards, we moved in with my grandparents. And I was so excited because, I mean, how many people get to spend time with their great-grandparents before they pass on? So she got to meet my grandparents and stay with them and learn from them and really spend time with her with them because she wasn't in school uh, she was being homeschooled by me and I had um, my mom and my brother were there for a little while so she was home all the time with them she spent tons of time with them which I'm really grateful for but as life would have it um, grandmother passed away in um, in 2014 and once my grandmother passed away, I mean, after 65 years of marriage, obviously my grandfather didn't feel the same. And he stopped going out. He stopped doing everything he used to do. He kind of just gave up. And from there, it was a really long, difficult journey to watch him just kind of shut down in his own way. And I mean, I understand. The more, I mean, I was in mourning for a really long time. My grandmother was like my mom. Um, when I was little, she was the one who raised me. Um, until I was about five, and then I went to go live with my mom. So my grandmother was everything to me. She held our whole family together, and she was the most amazing woman. And like I said, I'm lucky that my my daughter got to, to be with them and to really spend time with them. So as I mentioned, my grandfather slowly became ill, 
and instead of putting him in a hospice, instead of passing him on to somebody else, we took care of him. We made sure that he ate on time. We made sure that he had um, physical therapy. We made sure that he got up and walked around the house a little bit um, because he went through some really difficult stuff. He had, um, unfortunately, he had cancer. And um, yeah, it was not easy. And I know he was going through his own heartbreak. I know he was going through a lot of pain and discomfort with his illness. And he would say things like, you know, I just want to go. I just want to go. And I know what it was like for my mom to sit there and listen to him say these things while she's trying her best to keep him alive, her best to keep him comfortable and, and happy. So we lost my grandfather last year, um, about this time, actually, well, in July. And... Um, it's been a rough road. So once my grandfather passed away, my mom actually, you know, once the month and by the end of the month, she was just ready to go. She could, I mean, she couldn't be here anymore. It was really difficult because everywhere she turned, there were memories of them, and I and I totally get that. And um, I'm glad she had somewhere else to go. She went to go with, be with my dad um, in Sri Lanka. So that was really difficult for me because it felt like I lost my 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 second father, so to speak, because my grandfather raised me, like I mentioned, and um, and my mom, almost back to back. And it wasn't long before uh, my brother decided to leave too, because he had to go find a job and, you know, start out on his own. He had to strike out on his own. So by November of last year, he was gone too, and it was left with me and um, uh, the nanny I'd hired and my daughter. So we were just the three of us in our, in our house. And... Um, it was kind of quiet and lonely, but we made it work, you know. I cooked as much as I could, I tried to keep everyone entertained. But I'm not going to say it wasn't difficult. And then, unfortunately, this year, um, we had a couple mishaps with my nanny, and I had to get her, let her go. So in April, I let her go. And then from a house full of people, where it was my grandparents, my mother, my brother, you know, their maid, my nanny, it was like a lot of people in the house, and suddenly it was just the two of us. And she took it really hard, and I can't imagine what all she went through, and I can't imagine what she tells herself, but I was trying to help her tonight by telling her, she's not alone, I'm here, I'm always here, I'm not going to go anywhere. But she came back at me with the line saying, I have no one. I didn't know what to say to her. It's really difficult. But... um I tried to convince her that there were other things we could do. We could occupy our time. We can do whatever we want. It's just the two of us. We can go to the park. We could go to the beach. We could play outside as much as she wanted. We could make our own life. We were free to forge our own life. I know she misses everyone. I know she misses having people around because I'm used to having a house full, so it's hard for me. I can only imagine what, she, what it's like for her. But these are the things you have to do as a single mom. These are the things you have to like watch out for and try and prepare them for and try to help them understand that while things happen and they are not fun, you can't control most of anything. You can control how you react to it, you can control what you do about it, you can control how you think about it. But even then, that's hard. Your mind tends to run away with you, so it was hard to get her to calm down and stop crying and get her to go to sleep, but she's sleeping soundly now. I can't even imagine my life without her. So, being a parent, there is no handbook. There's no right or wrong way. You do the best you can with what you have. And I'm hoping that with everything I know and everything I've learned, I know enough to help her. I know enough to not screw her up. That's all of our fears, right? That we're screwing up our children. But, um, yeah. Tomorrow's going to be a little tough for us. But we'll get through it and know it. And even if it is like a distraction like movies or cartoons or whatever, I don't care. She's important to me. Her welfare is important to me. I need her to understand I will always be here. I'm sorry it was kind of deep today. Um, but like I said, I want you to know everything that goes on. I want to be completely transparent with you guys. I want you to be able to see that, you know, it's not always fun and games. It's not always, wow, I'm optimistic and positive and life will be great. It's not always like that. I fight my mind sometimes. I have bad days just like everybody else. And yeah, I dwell on it sometimes, but there's nowhere to go but up from here. I truly believe that. So, 
I will check with you all tomorrow. And hopefully it'll be a more positive message, a more exciting one. But even if it isn't, I'm going to share with you guys. I need you to know who I am. I need you to understand that I'm human. I'm just like all of you. The only thing is, I'm documenting this. I'm building a business. I want to be different. I want to change the world. And what better place to start in my own house, right? Alright y'all, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Bye.